The Acme company manufactures widgets. The distribution of widget weights is bell-shaped. The widget weights have a mean of 56 ounces and a standard deviation of 7 ounces. So using the standard deviation rule, also known as the empirical rule, we are to find 95% of the widget weights lying between which two numbers, what percentage of the widget weights lie between 49 and 79 ounces, and what percentage of the widget weights lie above 35. So to use the empirical rule, I first like to get a picture of actually what's going on. So I'm going to draw my bell-shaped curve. So we've got our normal distribution curve or our bell-shaped curve. And what do we know about that bell-shaped curve? Well, we know what the mean is, right? So I've got my bell-shaped curve right here. And I know what my mean is. My mean is 56 ounces. So I'm going to put 56 ounces right smack in the middle of this curve with symmetry on both sides. So I've got 56 ounces. Now I know my standard deviation is 7 ounces. So that means 7 ounces away from 56 gives me my first standard deviation. And I know that comes about where there's an inflection point. So that means right here if I take 56 ounces and I add 7 ounces to it, that gives me my first standard deviation position marker, which is at 63 ounces. And then my next standard deviation position marker, I add another 7 ounces because that's our standard deviation. So in between each one is going to be 7 ounces, right? And the next guy is going to be another 7 ounces. So that means my next marker is going to be at, what is that going to be at? Let's see. So that's 63 plus 7, which is 70 ounces. And finally, then 77 ounces. So, so far I have my right side. I have to do the same thing. So about where there's an inflection point. If I take 56 and I subtract off... 56 minus that 7 ounces, right, for my standard deviation. That tells me that the weight over here, 56 minus 7, is going to be 49 ounces. And 49 minus 7 is going to give me 42 ounces. And then 42 ounces minus 7 is going to give me 35 ounces. All right, so I have my setup now. And what do I know? So according to our empirical rule, according to the empirical rule, what do we know about our curve? Well, we know that within the first two bands, or the first two standard deviations on each side, 68% of the curve lies in those two bands. Or in other words, on each side, 34% of the population or the area under the curve lies. We also have the next bands. And so I know if I go out two standard deviations on each side, okay, that gives me a total of 95% of the area shaded. And I also know from charts that we've looked at that those two bands themselves are each 13.5% of the area under the curve. So each of those two next bands between the first and second standard deviations represents 13.5% of the curve. And then what do we have? Well, then, of course, we have to worry about our farther ones. And so the farther ones on the way outside, that's where it starts getting small. And I know my picture doesn't show it to scale, but those two purple bands those are both worth 2.35% of the total area. 2.35% of the total area. And then finally, we have those itty bitty tiny small bands on the way outside. Way, way outside. And I'll make those guys pink. And so these guys over here, well, let me make it a little brighter pink. Let me undo that and make that these guys over here and this guy over here, that represents 0.15% of the population, or if I like 0.15% of the area under that probability density function. All right, so 
We have our empirical rule. We have all of our percentages set up. And I think now we're ready to actually go ahead and answer all the questions. So part A, 95% of the widget weights lie between, and knowing our empirical rule, we know that 95% of the widget weights lie within two standard deviations away from the mean. So that represents 95% of the widget weights. And so the numbers that they lie between right there are going to be 42 ounces and 70 ounces. Question B, what percentage of the widget weights lie between 49 and 70? Well, now we just add up our percentages, right? So now what we're looking for is in between 49 to 70. So there are three percentages that I have to worry about. I have 34%, and I'm going to add that to another 34%, and then I'm going to finally add it to 13.5%. And when we add those three percentages together, that gives me all of the widget weights between 49 and 70 ounces. 34 plus 34 plus 13.5 actually gives us 81.5%. So we would say that 81.5% of the widget weights lie in between 49 ounces and 70 ounces. And so now we get to that last question. This one's a little tricky. So what percentage of the widget weights lie above 35? So here's 35 ounces. So I want to know what percentage of the widget weights lie above 35 ounces. Well, I can see in my picture that the area under the curve is 100% total, right? But if I'm going to lie above 35 ounces, that means there's only a tiny, tiny portion left over. That's this portion right here. That's the portion that I'm not including. So if I take 100%, which is the total area under the curve, and I subtract off that itty bitty tiny percentage on the left of 35 ounces, well, that will tell me what percentage of the weights lie above 35 ounces. So if I take 100 and I subtract off 0.15, I get 99.85%. So we would say that 99.85% of the widget weights lie above 35 ounces.